Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Guess what we're doing today? Today we are talking turkey, or we're sewing turkey. We are sewing the turkey applique. It's all about turkeys today, and uh, hopefully with enough time that you can applique one of these projects up uh, before Thanksgiving if you want to. Uh, for many of you who are extremely busy, I know. <laughs> And maybe you can save this in your files for next Thanksgiving, right? But really, who only eats turkey at Thanksgiving? We just got a $50 turkey for $5 at Food Lion that went in the freezer for some other time in the year. <laughs> Y'all, uh, our Food Lion is doing a really great deal this week, so you might want to check it out if you have a Food Lion near you. Where if you buy $35 worth of groceries, you get a turkey for $0.29 cents a pound. So we uh, are stocking up on turkeys, <laughs> just buying our normal groceries. Spending $35 at the grocery store is really not that hard to do, is it? Okay, I'm getting off track. <laughs> Today we're doing the turkey applique. Y'all, this applique PDF tracing file is free through Thursday, November the 23rd. Okay, Friday, November the 24th, the tracing file goes in my Etsy shop and gets combined with the cutting files that are already there. So if you have a cutting machine and you want to get the cutting files, they're already over on Etsy. I'm going to tell you what, it saved me a lot of time today cutting out all the pieces for this little turkey, right? Now, I'm going to be uh, making my turkey into a trivet, okay? But if you were to take this turkey and make four of him, you could easily make a table runner. Let me show you what that would look like. Isn't that cute, right? Very, very fun. Uh, I think he's super adorable, right? He's kind of popping in from the corner like, is it okay to be here? <laughs> Am I safe here? Uh, he's just popping in to say hello. So there is Mr. Waddles repeated four times to make a table runner. Of course, you could make a whole turkey quilt if you wanted to, right? So I always like to give you an idea of a project that you could do with this block, right? Uh, today I'm just making one block and I'm going to make a trivet with you today while I'm making this uh, project. Now, if you haven't already, you might want to hit the subscribe button so you get notified when I upload these videos. I usually publish them uh, Friday, and I try to be there uh, when the video premieres in the live chat. Y'all, last Friday was hectic. I had um, a client coming over to pick up a quilt that I had made for her, and I was in the middle of recording shirts for my next quilt that I have started and the day just got by me and before I knew it <laughs> the premiere was already halfway done when I popped in I am so sorry but I usually try to make it during the premiere on Friday I'm so sorry last Friday was so chaotic uh, but yeah if you subscribe you get notified and you can get these free tracing uh, templates while they're free right um, Otherwise, they just get combined into my Etsy shop. Okay, do y'all want to see what we're making next week? I think she's so super, super adorable, right? A little flying angel. I think I should have done her halo white. I think it would have shown up better for the picture. <laughs> but I haven't made her yet. I'm going to be making her next week with you. And this is the applique that we're doing next week. So... Subscribe if you haven't, and uh, you know what would be really helpful too, is if you clicked like on my video, thank you so much, and if you hit the share button and share it over on your Facebook, so all of your sewing and quilting friends can come join in on the fun. Okay, uh, one more thing before we get started for today. Many of you have joined along in this series and maybe last week was the first video that you saw. Maybe this week is the first video that you saw. Recently, on the last couple of videos, I've gotten a lot of comments saying, I wish you would cut out the pieces 
with us during the video so I can see the whole process, right? Usually I come in and my pieces are already cut. I use my scan and cut and the SVG file and cut out all of my pieces because it takes a few minutes to do this process, right? So I save some time in each video and I have my pieces pre-cut, but many of you are like, I really wish you would just cut out the pieces during the video. I don't think you want to sit here every week while I do that, but you're in luck because several, several weeks ago during this series, when we were doing the baby themed applique blocks, I did the entire uh, process, <laughs> I'm lost for words, the entire process with you. So down in the description box below, you're going to see a playlist link for the applique videos. Click on that link, or you could just go to YouTube and type in Lisa Capen Duck, and this video is going to pop up. This one right here. In this video, I did the entire process from the very beginning, okay? I came with my fabric, my heat and bond, my scan and cut mat. I used two different mats. I showed you what happens when the paper sticks to the mat. I showed you Canvas workspace and sending the file over to the cutting machine. I showed you everything. And it's really good because we're only cutting out a few pieces in that video, right? So the process isn't that long. But um, it does show you from beginning to end, the whole process, as we make that cute little applique. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out. Otherwise, we're going to save a lot of time not doing that in each one of the videos. <laughs> okay, now let's come over to the pressing board. You're going to see I have my Mr. Waddle's PDF here. Um, this one's a little bit different. Uh, if you haven't printed it out and taken a look yet, then uh, you don't know. But there's two pieces, two pages of tracing templates, right? These have been mirror imaged, so you're ready to start tracing with your fusible. I included a little thumbnail of what the block's going to look like up in the corner. But then you're going to see piece number one was separated into two uh, shapes, right? That's because this shape for the applique doesn't fit on a standard letter size piece of paper. <laughs> so I had to separate it. So for piece number one, you need to cut it and tape it together to get the whole entire shape, okay? And then you have the four pieces that you tape together to make uh, the placement guide if you want to use that, right? So that's what's different this week is piece number one needs a little bit of attention before you get started tracing. So let me warm up my iron. I have this. Let me get my silicone mat out. There we go. And as the iron is warming up, I'm going to start placing all of my pieces. Um, I think I'm going to work a little backwards today, right? Uh, I think if you place piece number one down first, you're going to lose the placement of all of these other pieces, right? Because it's going to cover everything. <laughs> so... Let's work a little backwards, or at least that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I'm going to bring in those pieces first. We're going to place those, and they're all mixed up. And because I used my scan and cut mat, they're not labeled, so I'm going to have to figure out which one is which. Nope. 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 <laughs> oh, that one's just right. So there we go. <laughs> I feel like Goldilocks. That one's just right. That one goes there. That is the advantage of cutting out these pieces by hand is that you can actually put the number of the pieces on the back side, right? 
And then that takes out all of the guesswork. This one. There we go. And there we go. I used two, two different fabrics and just alternated them. Um, I thought that would be cute. That's not you. For those of you following along in my chicken journey, <laughs> um, I'm going to post a little video update at the end of today's video. I figured I'd put it at the end because, uh, you know, many of you, understandably so, don't really care about my chickens, and that's okay, and I get it, <laughs> right? Uh, but many of you are uh, asking for updates quite often, and so I thought I'd give you a little update of me going out with the chickens, uh, but it'll be at the end of the video. All right, so there's the correct placement of all of those pieces. Now, if we lay down his body, that's going to overlap those pieces and bond them all together, right? So let's do that. I'm just going to match it up just like that. So let's heat these pieces. And it's just going to take just a tiny little bit of heat just to start that process of bonding those pieces. And now we're going to let this cool off for just a second, right? If we take it off the pressing board, the pressing board is hot, so I feel like it cools off better over there. <laughs> so we're going to let that sit there for a second. But yeah, uh, I did a little bit of chicken update for you at the end of today's video. And um, you get to see my little babies, which they're just growing so fast. The little, little babies. All right, let's see if we can lift this off. We're going to take this whole thing off and see how all of those pieces come right with it. Now we're just going to line this back up. And now we're going to bring in piece number one. I think this will work pretty good, don't you? There we go. Let me get it all flat. All right, and now we can bring this right back in, right? And all of those pieces are exactly where they're supposed to be. Isn't that gonna be super cute? feel like <laughs> hold on a second y'all oh there we go it helps <laughs> if you use the bottom down here <laughs> The little square part of his body was hanging off of the mat and I couldn't really see it. But if you line it up on that little square, it just lines everything right up, right? So let's go ahead and fuse that before I move anything else. Yeah, I think today I'm going to make um, 
a little trivet. So when I make my trivets, I use two layers of warm and natural batting. Now you could certainly just use Insulbrite if you have any on hand, right? Um, I tend to use what I have scraps of already here in my work area, right? And I always have an abundance of leftover batting pieces. So I just use two layers of warm and natural and that works perfectly fine for me. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing today. Now, because this part does cover up his face and those pieces really don't connect to anything else, so it's not like we can pre-fuse those pieces together like we did the inner feathers. <laughs> now I'm just eyeballing the placement of his face, right? So there's his eyes. Mine is looking off in that direction. And then we have his waddle and his beak. Isn't that going to be super cute? And I'm just layering mine like that. I think that's cute. So let's just fuse down those pieces. Yeah, last Friday was crazy, and I popped in halfway through that video, and then, what you know it, I was sitting here, and the car pulls in the driveway, and my client was coming to pick up her quilt, and I don't like to rush that process, right? This is the first time she's seeing her quilt uh, in person, and it was the prettiest quilt, right? And we made it with her mom's clothing. So, of course, I was taking my time and really uh, spending some time with her as she was looking at her quilt. So, I missed 95% of last Friday's video. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so while that's cooling off, look. I had just enough binding left over from... Uh, a little baby quilt that I made. Isn't this just adorable? This is just perfect, right? So I'm going to use that with my trivet. It's already made. <laughs> so I kind of on purpose picked out fabrics that go with that color so that I could just use that up and I didn't have to spend time <laughs> making another binding. So here's what I have, y'all. Uh, I have some back fabric. Some of my brown, I've been using my brown fabric up. Uh, yeah, and so huh, I think I might be close to ordering some more, but don't you just love it? I have two layers of warm and natural batting, and I have some tea stained muslin that I have starched and pressed. And then I used my 12 and a half inch ruler just to give myself a little placement, right? So let's move this off the screen for just a minute. Do y'all hear my cat? The door has been closed to the studio and they are not happy about it. But I have uh, eight, nine, nine more quilts to quilt for clients. <laughs> And once I go through and clean off that whole frame for the long arm, and then I dust and I vacuum all the bins and the floor in this room before I open up my client quilts, if I go through all that work, the door is getting closed and the cats are not allowed in until I'm done. So he's standing on the other side of the door crying. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Now I am going to just line up the very edge of Mr. Waddles right to the square that I drew with my ruler and that is the placement for this turkey. How easy is that, right? Let's just fuse him down. So 
So this very raw edge and that very raw edge is going to be caught in our seam allowance. If you were to make this into a table runner or a quilt, right? Because I'm going to make mine into a one block trivet. These two raw edges are going to be uh, sewn into the binding. He is just super cute. All right, so now let's go ahead. I'm going to layer my whole project. You could, at this point, just bring this over to the sewing machine and do all of your stitching right now, right? And all of your stitching to stitch down all of these pieces would be hidden either in your quilt or in your table runner or in your one block quilt or trivet, right? I personally like to layer my project and then stitch down all of these pieces because it not only stitches down all of the pieces, but it also quilts my project at the same time. So that's what I'm going to do, okay? I have my back fabric. I'm bringing in my purple glue stick. <laughs> Y'all, I'm still not a fan of the purple glue stick. But that's what I have a whole bunch of because I bought them on sale. So I'm going to try to be really light with it. Y'all remember when I used the purple glue stick and a big glob of glue went down and then I just covered it up with fabric and it showed through, right? I've just been trying to be super, super light with it. But the purple glue stick is not my favorite. <laughs> We're all different, right? I really like the clear one. All right. And I'm just adding swipes of glue between all of these layers. Like that. And like that. See how thin that glue is? It's so thin you don't even see a purple. <laughs> Hopefully it's enough to keep all of these layers in place though. All right, so now we have our block. I'm gonna get some of this gunky stuff off the side. Cause I'm trying to be super thin See that? Super thin. Super thin. There we go. And we're just going to put that on top. And we're pressing. I just want to dry all of this glue, right? before we bring it over to the sewing machine. I was trying to think of more updates that I was gonna give you. There was something else I was gonna say. Oh, this coming Saturday, we're doing our first ever quilt bingo <laughs> on Patreon. So if you're a Patreon member, yesterday I uploaded a whole bunch of pages of bingo cards. Don't forget to go print yours off. There's instructions on the post. But yeah, so far I have like six projects uh, as Typical Lisa Kip and Quilts video. Uh, I finished talking what I was going to talk about. 
came over here, threaded my machine, set my settings, got my zigzag stitch, started sewing, and looked over and noticed that uh, the sound stopped working on my microphone. So we're picking back up and I've already started, but fortunately <laughs> I looked over and caught it before I sewed everything down. And that's because I remembered what I was going to tell you a few minutes ago. So I was coming over here to tell you and I noticed there was no sound. So <laughs> what I wanted to tell you was I made some homemade cranberry juice with fresh cranberries in my water bath canner for the first time. It looks delicious. We also pressure canned some cat food for the cats yesterday. So I'm on my journey uh, in the canning. <laughs> I feel like we should always be learning something new. All right, back to the sewing. Uh, I had said that I wanted to use a variety variety of stitches for this turkey. I think that would be fun. So I'm starting with the lowest le level of the feathers with a zigzag stitch. So my zigzag stitch is set at 3.2 for the width and one for the length. So if you like the way that this zigzag stitch looks, you could start with these settings on your machine and make some adjustments according to your fabric and your thread and your particular machine to get a stitch that looks pretty close to this, right? All right, I'm gonna pick back up finish stitching and fortunately I've only gotten this far before I realized we're having technical difficulties today. So I'm going to pick back up and we're going to finish stitching the lowest level of the feathers. Okay, so that very bottom layer is stitched down and I can already tell it's really quilting up beautifully with the two layers of batting in there. We can just take a look at the back side. You may or may not see with the lighting, but uh, that's going to be fantastic. Now I can hear my bird in the background and I forgot to give him his box to play with. So let me go do that before we continue on because that can be really distracting. <laughs> okay, he is uh, much better for right now anyway. <laughs> I've been saving boxes for him because that seems to keep him pretty occupied on the days that I film these videos for you. All right. I want to do a little blanket stitch for each one of these inner feathers, right? Or the top feathers. So let's get that picked out here. Blanket stitch. The default of the blanket stitch on my machine is so tiny. <laughs> Okay, you see that? I'm going to space it out just two notches. Okay, so the stitch that I'm getting ready to use is uh, 3.0 on the width and 2.6 on the length, the blanket stitch. And we're going to do all of these little smaller 
top feathers, right? So let me get stitching on that. That's going to take a minute. I was just thinking, dang, that's a lot of little feathers to stitch down. Who designed that? <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> Halfway through stitching these feathers, you're going to be like, Lisa, that is a lot of feathers to stitch down. <laughs> Okay, there we go. That was a lot of little feathers to stitch. And I'm so paranoid about my microphone not working. I have to keep checking. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just trim all of these little stitches right here. Because the next thing I'm going to stitch uh, will be his body, right? And I'm going to just clean up all of these threads. Right out of the way. Oh, I found my little quilting gloves in my cart. <laughs> my overloaded Michael's craft cart. That thing is so jammed full of stuff. No wonder I didn't, I couldn't find them. All right, so there's all of my threads cleaned up. I love the blanket stitch so much. I'm going to use that to stitch down his body. But I'm going to increase the width just a little bit. So I'm going to bump up the width. Let's just pick 4.0 for the width. But I'm going to stay at the 2.6 with the length. All right. I already know that's going to have my stitches this close together. But they're going to be wider. Actually, let's bump it up to 3. Okay. 4.0 for the width and 3.0 for the length. So it's going to space them out just a little bit, but it's also going to make that stitch longer. Let's start right on over here.
All right, there is his body all stitched down. I really like that longer stitch. It's gonna be harder to see because the fabric is brown with a brown thread. Um, all right, so for the eye details, I think I'm gonna use a satin stitch. My machine has a preset for a satin stitch. It sort of does a column stitch uh, where the stitches are all the same width and they're very even on the sides. On my Juki HZLF600, the number five button is the satin stitch. If you don't have a pre-defaulted satin stitch in your sewing machine, you can achieve the same look with a zigzag stitch that is just closer together, right? Of course, you can use any stitch you want. You don't have to use the stitches that I'm using today, right? But I'm going to choose a satin stitch. The default settings, I'm going to use that. I already know that I like that for the outside of the eyes and probably his little pupils as well, okay? So this stitch is 2.6 on the width and 0.4 on the length. You can try that with a zigzag stitch and adjust there if you like the look of this stitch. All right, there are his eyes. Now I'm gonna use the same uh, satin stitch for his beak and his little waddle, except I want to make it not quite as wide. And so uh, I'm just gonna reduce the width down to a 2.2 and the length is still 0.4. I think that is super adorable. Now that is all of the applique pieces for the turkey, right? And if you were just sewing this as a block or as a trivet, you could be done at this point. Uh, I think I wanna do a little bit of free motion quilting on this in the background and maybe on the turkey's body. So I'll bring you along as I do that, but it's certainly not necessary and it's not part of the applique, right? And I think I'm gonna back the camera up a little bit. You know, I'm so sorry that I keep adjusting the camera. Y'all, if I were in a bigger channel <laughs> and I had a little film crew, right, that was moving the camera around for me, uh, monitoring the microphone and all of those things, I think my videos would be so much more smoother to watch. But since it's just me, uh, you know, I'm sorry for all the technical stuff. But y'all, I know many of you. And uh, y'all know me. None of my videos are perfect. So y'all bear with me. I'm going to move the camera back just a little bit so that you can see a little bit more of me doing some free motion quilting. And I'm going to change this open toe foot to my free motion quilting foot. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, I think that's better. It actually looks more clear too, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, I still have the same brown thread uh, in both my top and bobbin. 
you'll see I have my free motion foot on and uh, I particularly think my tension is way better when I don't lower the feed dogs although I can right and uh, I have a straight stitch set on my machine with a stitch length of a zero and since I have the brown thread in already I'm going to do some quilting in his body and then I'm going to switch over to a thread that just blends in with this muslin and just do like maybe some meandering in the background something not really close together I don't want it super dense uh, but just a little bit of texture just a little bit Okay, so three quilting lines. It's going to be hard to see in this light, but it just adds a little bit of texture. It's also going to help keep those layers of batting in place if I ever want to wash this, right? You can see I just traveled right along the edge of the turkey, right in that blanket stitch to travel from one line to the next. Super simple, right? So let me go change the thread and uh, I'll do some quilting on the background. Okie doke. You can see that I've checked my tension up here just right outside of the quilt. I don't have much extra fabric there, but uh, I'm still using the same brown thread in my bobbin. And because uh, I kind of want it to blend in on the back, the same as the rest of the stitching, right? Uh, but I didn't want to use the brown thread on the top. So I am using two different colored threads. Sometimes that can be tricky, adjusting the tension, right? I don't want to see any little brown dots on the top. That would be the bobbin thread coming up to the top. And hopefully we won't see any little cream colored dots on the back. I'd rather it be on the back though, if there's going to be any unevenness with the tension. And that's just me. But let's give it a go. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to do a really loose. I think I'm going to just do a meandering. I just want to add some ten, uh, some texture in the background and sort of stabilize these layers of batting in these larger background pieces anyway. Right. OK. Okay, I think that is perfect. Don't you think? Just a little bit of texture, really secure those layers of my trivet with those layers of batting in there. And yeah, I think we're done at the sewing machine. Let me just take this glove off. Come over here. Super adorable, right? And I'm very pleased. <laughs> with my uh, free motion stitch using the two different colors of thread uh, let me scoot you over just a little bit there we go uh, on the back it just blends right in there so uh, I had lowered my top tension to a negative uh, almost a negative two right and it was the perfect tension for my two different colors of thread you might have to play with that right if you're using Two different colors of thread anytime you always got to be checking that tension that can probably probably be the most frustrating part <laughs> if you want to use two different colors of thread is that tension can sometimes just 
you can just keep playing and keep playing just to dial it in, right? Uh, super, super cute, right? So what I'm going to do uh, is go ahead off camera and just square this up, right? Y'all have seen me square up projects all the time. I'm going to use my 12 and a half inch ruler and just clean up all of the extra uh, bits of batting and backing away from this block. And then I'm going to go do my binding. And y'all, I have binding videos here on my channel. If y'all have watched um, lots of my videos, you've probably seen me bind smaller projects like this. Um, all I'm doing is using a traditional quilt binding. I did cut this strip at two and a half inches wide and then just folded it in half, pressed it. That's my binding. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go bind this project and you'll get to see my finished trivet before we finish up. And I show you my chickens, right? All right. We'll be right back. So here we go. Uh, I squared him up. Let me just show you that picture right here, right? With my 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler and my rotary cutter. And then I just used the binding that I showed you earlier and I had just enough. Look, this was the extra bit that was cut off. <laughs> I had just enough, which was a great way to use up that extra binding, right? There is my trivet with all the quilting. Here's the back, y'all. Like in this shadow, when I do this, you can just see the quilting on the back. I think this will be the perfect size trivet for a green bean casserole or a corn pudding. Uh, and I'm even going to try my hand at making some of my grand's homemade yeast rolls, y'all. Wish me luck. I can't wait to try it. I'm going to like do a test run tomorrow or Friday before Thanksgiving comes. <laughs> Homemade yeast rolls. Oh my goodness, my grand's recipe. We'll see how they turn out. But this would be the perfect trivet for a good uh, dish like that, right? Isn't he just so cute? This was a lot of pieces to stitch down, but it's not hard sewing, right? And they're not tiny parts or pieces. So uh, I think a blanket stitch is just a little bit time consuming. If you were to use a zigzag stitch, I think you'd breeze through those pieces uh, in a short amount of time. Same with the satin stitch. That's a little bit time consuming. Those stitches are so close together. There's so many of them that it takes a little bit longer. So there's definitely ways you could speed him up if you wanted to make a whole bunch of these, right? In time for Thanksgiving. These make wonderful gifts. You could make some for um, house guest, friends and family coming for the holidays. These also make wonderful things, uh, Christmas gifts. Like if you make several of them and give them as a set, I'm sure your friends and family would love them. If you have a craft booth, maybe you want to make a whole bunch to sell right here before Thanksgiving. Now's the time to do it, right? But if it's just too darn late in the season for you and it's just too close to Thanksgiving, Save this pattern, put it in your toolbox of patterns, and don't forget about it. You could make some now and get a head start for next year, right? Super, super cute. Before we close out for the day, I told y'all I wanted to give you a chicken update on my chickens. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just move you over outside. I actually took this video yesterday day before yesterday i don't know but let's go see how my chickens are doing time to bring the chickens some treats <laughs> Ooh, it's sunny today it's a little chilly but actually it feels really good Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Ooh, birds. Where is everybody? Can you spot our little baby babies? 
they're not so little anymore. The gold and the black one right there. Those are our baby babies. <laughs> Say hi, Rudy. You growing your tail feathers back, boy? Good morning, everybody. Let's go check for some eggs. Y'all look, there's our garden plot for for next year. Y'all would be so proud of me. I'm learning how to can and everything. Let's check for some eggs. Oh, can y'all see? We got a couple eggs. One of them's fake, y'all. <laughs> one of them's wood. But there's one, two. Bear with me for just a second. I'll grab those. That's the wooden one. <laughs> Ta-da! Wood shaving. Our eggs for the day. Let me get this locked back down in there. Who wants a treat? Who wants a treat this morning? Nobody wants treats this morning? <laughs> Usually they go all cuckoos. Let me put these eggs down. Put one there. One there. There they are. Ta-da! Everybody must have full bellies. Y'all must have full bellies. Come on. Scoochie, scoochie. Scoochie, scoochie. Sorry, I am... Turning y'all every which way. Who wants treats? Who wants treats? Watch out, watch out, watch out. There we go. We got takeout last night and I don't usually eat my rice that comes with mine. So we saved it for a treat. <laughs> you can do it. Go in in there and get some rice. Look at the little baby in there. <laughs> She's not scared. Oh my goodness. You got to share. You got to share. Oh, the little baby, she got some. Look, she stole it. <laughs> She's very timid. She is at the bottom of the pecking order, the very, very bottom. But look, she got her some. She got her some rice. That one there, that's buttercream. She had a near-death experience when she was just a few days old. So she's she's quite the survivor. She's tough. <laughs> she gets right on in there with all the older ones. Look, here she comes again. She's going to get some more. There she goes. She got some. 
Well, here's our latest chicken update, everybody. Okay, y'all, aren't they just super dang cute? <laughs> I think some of them are getting, uh, some of them are 19, 20 weeks old. And according to Google's, <laughs> around 22 to 24 weeks, uh, they could start laying eggs. So we might start saying more than two eggs a day pretty soon, but we're also going into fall and winter months and the days are shorter and the chickens are molting, right? They're losing some of their feathers. So that takes a lot of energy away from them. Plus the shorter days. Uh, so it's my understanding that we might get less eggs anyway, but it's possible a couple of these girls are getting old enough to start laying. So we'll see. We're still two eggs a day. Okay, y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, with all my technical difficulties, I love y'all. Y'all are troopers. Thanks for being so awesome. And I am really looking forward to the angel next week. Uh, I hope you are too. I think Poppy's been pretty good today. He did a couple of little... Uh, noises in the background but not bad yeah i think we're gonna go i see my camera glitching <laughs> do you ever notice that sometimes when things are going really really good and you're being so so productive like in your sewing or in your art or in your work in general and you notice that for a good little stretch things are being so productive and going so good and then all of a sudden you start having technical difficulties with your machines, cameras and microphones. I knew I was on a run. <laughs> now I'm going to start having some technical difficulties. I hope today is the end of it. All right, y'all. I will see y'all next week. Okay. And then we're right before Thanksgiving, aren't we? Bye everybody. Toodaloos.